So I'm going to try to keep this brief, but many of you may have heard that yesterday, Thursday, October 17th, at Chicago O'Hare International Airport, there was an incident where an American Airlines 787 Dreamliner unfortunately ingested a cargo container that was being towed by a vehicle that went in front of the aircraft. This was a completely avoidable incident had the driver of the tug that was towing the cargo container had exercised a little bit more of situational awareness as well as patience. I drive on this road fairly frequently as an airport employee, and I can tell you that I've had to wait a long time, several times, waiting for aircraft to clear before proceeding because I could have either gotten run over, I could have cut off an aircraft, which would have been very bad, or I could have gotten jet blasted and my vehicle overturned or my cargo, as happened in this case, blown off the trailers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the CCTV camera footage. It's from pretty far and it's not the clearest, but you can see, you can get the gist of, of what happened. So we're going to play this right now and then afterwards I'm going to show you some images of the aftermath of the engine and then I'll show you an explanation of exactly how this happened. So as you can see here in the video, we have a single tug go by, perfectly fine, that's only towing a single luggage cart followed by another cargo tug towing four dollies, well, three dollies and a bag cart. That's the maximum allowable amount of dollies and carts that can be towed at O'Hare. Maximum is four. And there's a reason for that. I'll get into that here in a little bit later. The first tug makes it across both taxiways Bravo and Alpha perfectly fine. However, you can see there's an aircraft taxiing northbound on taxiway Alpha. Had I been driving that tug, I would not have proceeded across because, for one, there's two aircraft, Air France and the American 787, blocking the service road almost. And two, there's an aircraft taxiing northbound on taxiway Alpha that I might not have been able to see because of the Air France blocking my view. I would not have proceeded across the road at this time. Unfortunately, these people did. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Our tug towing three dollies and one luggage cart proceeds right in front of the American 787 Dreamliner. But at the same time that that happens, the Air France A350 in front of the Dreamliner powers up and starts taxiing forward. And now the jet blast from the A350 blows three cans off the dolly, off the dollies. And one of them goes right into the number two engine. The right side engine on the American 787 ingests one of the AKE containers. And it's game over. And the driver stops as he realizes that everything has gone terribly wrong. And this is a major incident. So now let's look at some images of the aftermath to the number two engine, the right side engine on this Boeing 787 Dreamliner. An AKE weighing approximately two to three hundred pounds empty, which I believe these, these containers were empty. If they had freight, it was a very small amount of freight that was inside them. Um, their max capacity is approximately 3,500 pounds. If they had any freight in them, they probably, if they were fully loaded, they probably wouldn't have blown away like you just saw in the video there. So this AKE weighing two to 300 pounds just went through the engine and it's caused a lot of damage to this engine. As you can see, the main intake fan is completely damaged. The fan blades on the edges are damaged beyond repair. There's no repairing that. Those have to be all re replaced, every one. And I believe the individual cost for each fan blade is approximately $300,000. $300, so that's not going to be an easy fix or, or a cheap fix. I don't even want to know what the compressor stage fans inside that engine look like. I'm sure they've they've taken some damage as well. There's probably bits and pieces of that container and the fabric or nylon flap that that covers it instead of a door most of these usually have like a nylon or a plastic flap that just drops over the side and you strap it down to close it i'm sure there's bits and pieces of that container all over the inside of that engine that engine is going to have to be dismantled and evaluated and they're going to have to check if it's worth even repairing and putting it back into service or if it's all just going into scrap. I'm sure parts of it can be salvaged. Maybe even the whole engine could be salvaged. I, I don't know. I'm not an AMP. But I'm fairly certain that that's going to be a tough job for somebody.
So the last thing that I'll cover is the ground layout of the airport itself leading up to this incident and the incident itself. American 47 landed on runway 27 center at approximately 2.50 in the afternoon and they back taxied on Echo all the way to Bravo here and then took Bravo south past the Bravo pad over the bridges over the highway past Alpha 16 and the incident happened right between Alpha 16 and Alpha 15 on the service road that crosses both taxiways Bravo and Alpha. Here. So right here we have the service road that I've mentioned several times during this video. This is the service road where the tug towing the three dollies and one bag cart that had three cargo containers blow off was crossing. So the service road is bounded by Alpha 16 to the north, Alpha 15 to the south, Terminal 5 to the east, and Terminal 3 to the west. This service road serves to connect Terminals 5 and Terminal 3. Thousands of airport vehicles go on this road every day, safely, without incident, right? And then you also have taxiways Alpha and Bravo that can be used to move aircraft both north and south multiple times throughout the day. ATC ground control will do whatever they have to do to get aircraft, to keep aircraft moving to where they need to go, whether they're departing or arriving. Now, the major issue with driving across this service road is that you have to time it just right between aircraft taxiing by. You've got about five to 600 feet that you've got to cross two taxiways and there's no stopping in the middle. If you stop, you risk getting struck by an aircraft. You risk getting ticketed by the airport security. You risk a lot of things. So you have to commit to make it all the way across in one shot. Additionally, like I mentioned earlier, the maximum allowable number of dollies or trailers that you can tow behind the tug is four. There's a reason for that. Four means that you're probably not going to get stuck in the middle. You're not going to overhang when you get to the end. There's That's the reason why there's a limit of four, four dollies per tug. So, in conclusion, what do we learn from this incident? How, we, how do we prevent this from happening ever again? For one, you need to be patient. If you're going to cross the service road, you need to be absolutely patient. You need to make sure there are no aircraft coming. And you need to make sure that you're going to make it all the way across. Two, you should properly secure your cargo containers to the dollies. There's locks that come up and come over the lip of the bottom of the containers that secure them properly to the dollies. I'm not sure if they were properly secured on these dollies. I would imagine they are. But it goes without saying that they need to be properly secured. And the curtains on them should also be closed. Three, and probably the most important and probably the final point that I'm going to make, is that driver training for driving on the airfield should absolutely focus very strongly on preventing incidents like this in the future. They need to start showing the types, these types of videos to new ramp employees and stressing the importance of doing things correctly. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If I missed anything, please feel free to mention it in the comments. Um, and I hope that I don't have to make a video like this again. This is a new type of video for me that I'm making. Um, again, let me know in the comments what you think. Did I do it right? Anything I could have done better? Anything I missed? Please let me know. And thank you for watching my video. And if you like what you see on my channel, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there.